right, this is section 3.1, 13.1, and 13.2 from our Calculus 3 class. Um, we're going to talk about vectors a little bit today, do a bunch of problems, remember how they work. If you haven't seen them before, you're going to get a crash course. So let's start. So let's think about what a vector is. So we're going to go to the textbook and read the definition. Yes, I know students hate textbooks, but you ought to learn how to read them. So the first thing we're going to talk about is this, this displacement vectors. And so let's read the blue box. So the displacement vector from one point to another is literally an arrow with its tail at the first point and its tip at the second. The magnitude or length of the displacement vector is a distance between the points and is represented by the length of the arrow. The direction of the displacement vector is the direction of the arrow. So basically it's like pointing from one spot to another. That's what we consider displacement vectors. This is on page 686 of the textbook. If you'd like to look it up, page 686. Okay. Now this is a picture of a vector right here. And let's talk about the pieces that was mentioned in the definition. So this end here is considered the tail. And this end over here is the tip. Should be easy to remember. Think about an actual arrow, the tip of an arrow. The length of the arrow from here to here is known as the magnitude. Think about the word magnitude in the English language, how big something is. That's exactly what that is. Now this arrow goes this way and this is called the direction. So you need to understand that terminology because they're going to talk about it in problems in different ways and things like that. So make sure you know that vocabulary. Now a unit vector, these are really, really important to your future, namely when we start doing directional derivatives. So a unit vector is a vector whose length or better magnitude is one. All right. So whenever we talk about a unit vector, that unit vector, that vector must be length one. Now this is important information. If you multiply any vector by a positive constant, and we are now going to call that a scalar, it simply changes the magnitude, not the direction. It can either shorten the magnitude if the scalar is between 0 and 1, so that's shorten, or lengthen if greater than 1. If the scalar is negative, it will change not only the magnitude, but turn its direction around 180 degrees. So let's say I have vector v here that points like this. If I say 2v, the direction will be exactly the same, but it'll be like the two vectors end to end, the original v. So then that vector there would be considered 2v. If I say the vector w and I say negative w, then it will turn it around, same length, opposite direction. All right, these are subtle things that you need to know. Don't forget them. All right. Now let's go down and think about the two kinds of vectors that we have and we will work with. So the first kind is called displacement and it shows movement in a plane or in a 3D space either from point to point or movement of an object from original position to a new position. So you can think of it easier way. So I, I'm, I'm at point A, I want to show going to point B, so that's a displacement vector. If I have object original position, and I show its movement over to this position, position one and position two, that's the second type of displacement vector. So this shows movement of a single object. This moves is a movement from point A to point B. Now position vector is a vector, not vectors, whose tail is always at the origin of a set of axes. 
either two axes or three axes, it doesn't matter, and whose tip points at a particular place in a plane or in a 3D space. So if I'm sitting here in my XY axis and I have a vector that comes out here and points to the ordered pair 3 comma 2, that's considered a position vector. The vector is pointing at a position in the plane. It could be either a 2D plane or a 3D plane. It doesn't matter. All right, let's talk about components. Now, this is something, again, that you'll use in physics. You'll use it in this class, uh, especially in Chapter 17. Oh, by the way, up here, we're going to talk about position vectors more specifically in Chapter 17. And then displacement is mostly Chapter 13 where we're working right now. Okay, so there's two kinds of vectors you can think of. This is the one we're working with now. All right, let's talk about components. So components are based on unit vectors that are defined in each on each of the axes. So unit vectors. So let's say I have a unit vector of length 1 pointing in the x direction. That is known as a vector i. Now notice I write the letter i and then I put a little vector, a little half arrow over the top. That's the way most math books do it. You can use a hat if you want. So if I say I with a hat, that's fine. That's a physics way. Either way, you can't just write I. That means imaginary number. That could be a variable. It could be a constant. Don't do that. No. This hat or that with arrow. I will use the arrows. Okay. Now, on the x-axis, we call it I. On the y-axis, our unit vector is called J. Over here in the 3D plane, it's the same thing for X and Y. So here on the Y axis, I have my unit vector J. And then over here on the X axis, I'll have my unit vector I. And then we have one more for the k axis, or the z axis, and we're going to call that k. So notice the three letters clustered in the alphabet are the three letters that we'll use to talk about our components, how we write vectors algebraically.